Just kidding guys, I'm not here for invasion. I'm here to show you the water maker I have recently created. Originally, I had the idea of making water without depending on any source that one day we might not have it was because of climate change and shrinking population of trees. But the urge to build it now rather than later is because of the recent conflicts that taking place in the world. People don't have access to water and electricity. We need a source that can help them to make their own water and electricity. And that's why I'm here and I'm trying to come up with an idea so people can make water. As you can see, this machine works 100% with solar power, which is the key point in the survival situation to have something that you're not gonna run out of. I have to thanks the asshole who left this plastic cup here because I forgot to bring mine. This is amazing. I only had this two minutes out and you can already see the water condensation on the radiator. Guys, I only need one drop to see this is possible to do. Even though the weather is not working in our favor, but I still can see some condensation on the radiator. This is very promising even though we are not producing as much voltage in the cloudy weather. After patiently sitting for a while, I am excited to show you something that we have been waiting for. And here is our little droplets that we have catch from the air using only solar power. There you go guys, here it is, here's our little drop. If we can make one drop, that means whatever we did, we need to do it bigger to capture more water from the air. After testing this prototype, I found some pieces we are missing and some minor designs that needs to be changed. The number one problem is we have a small surface area that we need to touch more air in order to generate more water from it. And that leads to problem number two. If we add bigger surface area, we need more power. So that means we need a bigger solar panel to generate more voltage to support that bigger surface area. Because more air molecules touching the surface, we need to maintain the temperature in order to condense water out of it. And the third problem is the easiest, and it is airflow. If we add more surface area and generate enough voltage, we might as well circulate more air in order to generate more water. And that's why, for the second test at home, I tried to add a fan in order to increase the airflow into the system. But before I run the test, I'm gonna show you how this works. I have used three types of fasteners in this project, and I have I've designed the bottom portion very modular so I can redesign any modification to the bottom of this. It is held there by three screws and it comes out pretty easy. Okay, we finally got to the main part and that is where the condensation happens. The aluminum radiator you're about to see collects the water molecules from the air by keeping its temperature low. Basically air goes in from here and the radiator catches the water molecules and exits from the bottom. After removing the cover, we get to the main components that are extremely simple and they're accessible anywhere in the world. The key element is to use components that are cheap and accessible in the world. Alright, here's the meat and potato of this water maker. The back portion of this machine is responsible to help heat to exit the system. Basically, the air goes in from the back and blows onto the radiator and exits from the top. The radiator sits directly behind the fan so it can cool down by the blown air through the radiator. And this is the radiator which is responsible to collect all the heat from the Peltier that is transferred from the front side. And Peltier is a small device that if you give it voltage, it will transfer heat from one side of it to the other side. There it is, that little white piece over there is Peltier, which is responsible to collect the heat from one side and give it to the other side, and the other radiator is responsible to exit all the heat. And simply through this process, we will make one side colder than the other side. And imagine instead of a small surface, we could have larger cold surface, so a lot more water from the air could stick to it. And here's the wiring for the Peltier. If we give it more voltage, the Peltier will transfer the heat a lot faster. So that means we get colder surface. But one Peltier is not going to be enough for larger surface area. We need to add couple more Peltiers in order to see some good result. And after if we give it that airflow, I think we are golden. And we are on our way to make some decent amount of water. But of course, we need more fans and bigger exhaust system to exit all those heats from multiple Peltiers. Alright, enough of that, let's get to the testing. Here I'm supplying 9 volt power, which is pretty enough to make this machine work. 
On the prototype design, I don't have an attached fan, but I'm adding an external fan to increase the airflow so I can see the result with more air circulation. A few minutes later. Here is three minutes after giving it power. Look at it. It has condensation on the radiator. It is very promising. I am so happy with the result. A few hours later. All right, let's take a look at the amount of water we have made during six hours. Look at that. That is pretty decent. If we have been able to make that much water with the prototype, imagine how much water we can make with the 2.0 version. All right, I want to come clean with you guys. I'm a student and really passionate to research about making water and help the world, especially right now. If you donate anything to this project, 100% of it will go towards researching and making water. Peace out.